Nope, 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 nope. What are you doing? <clears throat> that was a close one, guys. When you think of a computer virus or malware, you typically think of them as silent, secretive, hidden pieces of code operating behind the scenes without your knowledge and committing nefarious acts. Well, today I've encountered a piece of malware which is not silent, not quiet. It is very noisy, obvious, showing everything that it's doing to the victim in a very terrifying and elaborate way. We're going to analyze this piece of malware that I've aptly named Noisy Boy. Nico knows tech, all your tech tips and reviews on deck. Nico knows tech, number one channel with the news on deck. You know, normally I know exactly what's gonna happen when we test malware here, uh, but I really have no freaking clue because this thing just dumps so much modules or components of this this threat and it just non-stop dump. And you know what, we're just gonna record. We're just gonna record, we're gonna go in here and just run it and see what happens. I could make this video like five times, we'll get different results every time. Uh, we're using any run as always. Um, you can check the link in the description. You can get started for free. You just need a business email. If you don't have one of those, I'll put their Discord link below and they can set you up there. Anyway, this is an online malware testing um, platform. Don't test malware on your own computers, duh. All right, we're gonna go ahead and run the analysis. All right, the executable has been added a bin to the end also for protection so if we take out the bin and the dot we should be able to run it okay now we're going to do exactly what we're not supposed to do which is double click on stupid stuff all right so immediately this thing is so noisy hence why i call it noisy boy it's going to do so much it has what's called a loader on it which is what we used to call uh i guess like it's a similar to a trojan downloader but this is going to install a ton of stuff including a lot of malware tools which you guys probably shouldn't know about but we're going to talk about anyway and i think this is either a smoke screen because it's doing a lot of stuff in the background including installing rats remote access trojan remote access um, it's communicating out to a C2, which it's actually going to show us. At least it did last time I ran this. One quick note about this malware is that it has anti-VM technology, a technology that's designed to detect if it's operating in a virtual environment. And the purpose of this can have many reasons, but the most common one I've seen is to be able to see if it's operating in a VM, and if so, not do anything so that it maybe avoids detection. And this is very interesting, and this makes it a lot harder for home malware researchers to do this in VirtualBox or VMware or your own home environments, which is why I'm using AnyRun because a lot of these guys out there are making malware that can't that can detect that they're operating in a VM and then change their behavior based upon that, making it very difficult for us to analyze it without these online tools. Now, when I mention C2, that's a command and control server. This is some, I'm sorry I'm talking like so much all at once. This threat is a lot of types of threat all into one. So the first payload up here, which we can actually see, um, is, is a loader. And then it starts uh, installing rats for remote access to this machine. And I think there's a lot of outside influence here, like hackers connecting and doing a different session because every time I run this, I get a different set of results. Sometimes I get more graphical user interfaces. Um, some of these things are 16 bit. There's markdown monitor, generate. That was stupid. You would never want to do that. Um, this is generating a um, ransomware. Um, this is a ransomware builder. And CG update. So yeah, I'm just interfacing here. But the truth is, is all this stuff that I'm interfacing, this is all that you would see here. You wouldn't see all of this. This is our analysis tools um, that are built into this platform so we can see what's going on in the background. But it is dumping all kinds of malicious payloads. Um, it's connecting to outside C2 servers. Um, it's using a lot of, here we go, here's some more activity. It's a key gen. I think this is, yeah, it's already turned off user account control. There's a rat. See, it's even telling us it's called Power Rat. That's the, the type of remote access Trojan uh, that lets a hacker connect to our computer and remotely control us. Uh, very scary stuff. Nope, 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 nope. What are you doing? <clears throat> that was a close one, guys. It tried to take us to, <clears throat> to the hub. <laughs> 
before you ask me in the comments whether or not this can be detected by your antivirus or another antivirus, I really can't say. It's a new threat, so there is reason to be cautious. I only tested it against the one that I use, which is ESET Home Security Premium. And as you can see here, upon extraction, it was immediately detected by ESET and quarantined. So if you're already on ESET, you're good to go. And if you're not, you can check out the links in the description for the latest deals. All right, we have KD Mapper. See, all of this stuff is malicious tools, and a lot of them are the, they appear to be the operator tools that someone would use to control malware or to create ransomware, uh, to log into a machine, to create, to, uh, to take advantage of exploits, penetrate systems, penetrate networks. So it's trying to do the, the .NET framework. It's trying to install everything it needs to do what it wants to do. And then it's taking a screenshot. Yeah, there is a lot of stuff going on here. And if we just sit here, this will continue on for a while. And the what, what's kind of interesting is the viewer or the victim would be terrified seeing all of this stuff happen without their knowledge, without their, their input. And no matter how much they try to close it, um, it's, it's actually pointless. Because I actually think that this is all a smoke screen this is all a distraction, which you see on screen, to hide the fact that it's installing um, a lot of uh, which Bitcoin miners to generate uh, money for the attacker, adware. It's also adding this computer to a botnet to operate as many other victim computers, again, to generate money. This computer is essentially completely compromised or hacked, as a layman would say. This is actually being hacked, not just your Steam account stolen or somebody getting access to one or two things. This computer is completely compromised. Thank God it's a VM. Um, and this would require, it's so bad it blue screened the VM. And I've seen this happen a bunch of times because it's using every single system resource this thing has to run as many types of, uh, of things going on here at a time. We're gonna go ahead and run it again, and we're gonna get a completely different different experience. I'm gonna go ahead and restart it. Same situation. And we'll do the same thing again. And we're gonna get a whole different set of, uh, of pop-ups. Sometimes we get the same reoccurring ones, especially the ones with a graphic user interface with some art on it, which is kind of cool. Hopefully this one doesn't take us to websites we can't show on YouTube. Okay, we have extracted that just like before. I called it house bomber because it does have a house bomber element to it, which is the, the loader part where it's dumping all of these applications and installing all of this stuff. Uh, for those of you that are in cybersecurity, they're, they're, it's, some of it's using Edge. Um, it wants to use Chrome. If you allow it to install it, we'll do things through Chrome at the command line level. But most of the stuff that's getting installed over and over and over again, and, and, and one after another rather, is using the curl command at the command uh, console host. So right here, um, we start seeing some activity. And it doesn't have it listed here because we have so many types of threats. I think they're, this is a dropper too, because it's dropping new threats. But this one is, it's basically compromising all of the security of the system. And there, we have a new image here. The, if you're in cybersecurity or malware research, this is actually one of the cooler viruses because you get to see a lot more. Most of them are very silent and everything we're seeing is behind the scenes. We have a PowerShell script running. Uh, let's see, this is gonna to try to do some serious modifications to the operating system. We got a lot of errors. And they don't even hide it. Um, alpha tweaks. They'll literally call what this is, Screen Connect Client. I've seen this happen about four times today while analyzing this malware. That is a remote access Trojan client that allows them to actually see what's on screen. And then this looks like the, uh, the administration software um, to connect to a Trojan. So it's actually showing the IP. If they're watching the screen, they can see the ID and use this software to connect. And in a couple of the tests that I've done today, we've had actual people from all over the world. And I think they're all notified whenever there's one of these coming up. And we had multiple people from all over the world 
um, connected to this computer doing things. And we got some PowerShell. They're going to run a script. We probably won't see that part. Screen Connect client is fully uh, installing. We got Chrome installed. Chrome does not come on this. There is a tax invoice. Don't know if that's anything. It's probably it's probably just a generic um, PNG file because it's on a content delivery network. This thing also installs. The reason why I think that this is just a smoke screen, like everything that's important going on in the background, this is just to scare you and get you focused all on this to where as soon as you make this stop, you think you're clean. Remcos 1.7 Pro is actually a, a, a meta stealer and it's showing you on screen that it's installing Remcos. Um, I've actually done a few videos where we cover Remcos. Um, but you know, and normally you wouldn't want to do this. I'm actually cooperating with the malware, but I just don't think it matters. I, th when you have a computer that is this compromised, it doesn't matter if the person's cooperative anymore. It has full control over the machine. Right here, Remcos 1.7 Pro is communicating with the CNC, which under the connections tab, we can actually see here and all of here. In a few minutes, you should see a whole bunch of FTP client opens, communicating all over the world, different ISPs, a lot of communications to China and Germany. And then we got a Windows activation screen here. Don't know why, it might be fake. It looks fake because it's so low resolution. I think this is a fake screen that just wants you to click this and it's actually just doing something bad over here. <laughs> which we have so many processes we're running out of space for me to even see what's going on here we have a logger crypto miners we have worms um, this is very bad if you're on a network with other computers because this could be a network trojan let's check the threats which is over 350 we have if we see network trojan activity we do this means we might have a risk for this spreading across your network, infecting your smart home, smart devices, Alexa, smart TVs, or other computers. Um, yeah, this is this is a smoke screen. It's actually nothing. Um, here is what's actually going on. This is to scare you because it didn't actually run a script. And there's a command line in here which we could actually find if you add a particular extension or argument it won't show the powershell screen so it, it's being visible because they want it to be visible i think because it's to scare the bejesus out of the victim and i think this would be very um this is a vnc scanner now another interesting thing that's not being listed here is this has anti-vm technology okay here they are let's look up anti-vm it may not have deployed at this time uh, an hour ago when I was running this, we had a a console screen and a command prompt come up here and it tried to detect if it was on a VM. It failed to detect that it was on a virtual machine because it doesn't know how to find the VM we're using now. It only knows how to you how to find like Proxmox, VirtualBox, VMware. It knows how to look for that, but it can't detect that it's on on this. Okay, so the party's over here. Oh, we have more going on. So this is starting to get, trying to block our screen. Yeah, we're getting, this is kind of rem reminiscent of the Windows XP Vista and Windows 7 days. When you got malware, it was often very in your face. These File Explorer um, are just here to annoy us and block uh, what's actually happening um, at those at those login screens, which is smart. I mean, it's kind of funny because we can actually see what they type in here. If we go into here, we can actually see in stream data often what they're actually sending to the C2 server and what's being sent back because they don't encrypt it usually. Stream data, text. This is what's being sent back to the C2. This is what's being sent by the C2 to this computer. This is being sent, it's a keep alive connection and yeah all of this we even got some cool ones i like the ones that have like a, some art on here and this one is actually trying to connect out it's doing something over here that's cool 
Oh. It's trying to send files. It's trying to send files right in front of us. It's kind of silly because it doesn't need to show us that. It could do it from the command line. It can do it invisibly with Microsoft Edge, uh, with the FTP protocol. And we've, we have all of these. So many, over 777 uh, malicious threats talking out. Yeah, this computer is messed up. Okay, I think we've seen enough. So now I'm gonna show you how you can actually analyze a lot of this. So you don't have to be so fast. I know everything's happening so quick and it's real exciting and that's what makes it fun. But if we go up here and stop the session, we can get the sample, of course. We can get a bunch of information here. But a cool thing here is we can use um, AI summary and this will use an AI model to kind of extrapolate what happened here. It's still in beta, but it's interesting that we get kind of an explanation right here in front of us. So it says this process is used to execute a program called Viewer XE. And it doesn't tell everything here, but it's really cool. And you can download this. You can also get a whole text report. You could export this as an HTML document, which will mean you can actually show what happened here in graphic detail. But I like to go over here to the attack button and this will show you how everything happened in order because it's kind of hard to show on screen. But this actually shows us some really good stuff. I'll let that load. And then over here we can see a graph as well. And it's loading, loading, loading. Here's our graph and we can see all the way from where we started. So we started here with WinRAR and then we saw this executable which dropped this and then it communicated out to C2. And then this executable, I didn't have to know this before because I'm just reading the diagram. It spit out all of this and it was extensive. All of this stuff, all of these executables, all of these tasks that got run, all started from here. And over here, we can see the attack vector. First was execution on this line. It'll also tell us if it's persistent. So it creates a scheduled task on how it can stay running on the machine. And then all the different aspects, the C and two, C and C, we can click on it, get more information. The non-standard port, everything about it. So if you're in cybersecurity or you have to explain a breach to the board or to your boss, nothing better than having this information. And that's why, you know, this is for professionals. You know, some prosumers can get into this. Um, but this is the part that's really designed for cybersecurity professionals, cybersecurity teams, because it's just amazing at all this information. Hey, congratulations for making it to the end of the video. I hope you found this video helpful and maybe insightful, maybe even entertaining. I was glad I was able to take you along with me on this wild ride on analyzing this kind of crazy malware. And I hope you like this video. If you do, smash that like button and maybe consider subscribing. I'll see you next time.